Raw, thoughts am I the only one who, thinks WWE's booking of Ronda Rousey is on point? Rousey's first singles match in WWE, and her second match overall, is going to be with Mickie James, who is the perfect choice for the spot. Rousey and James are scheduled to face each other at a house show in Paris on May 19, hopefully Kane isn't booked for that event. The veteran James will lead Rousey through the match and undoubtedly bump her butt off for her. After Rousey is done with James, my guess is that Natalia, another veteran and strong worker, will turn on Rousey, leading to a match between the two, possibly at SummerSlam. Of course, WWE could pull a swerve and have Rousey turn on Natalia. Rousey would make a terrific heel. More, follow the greatest Royal Rumble Liv is excited about the Sammy and Kevin show. Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens have great chemistry, and I have no doubt their talk show segments are going to be entertaining. Owens has always had the versatility to be able to cut serious, heat-generating promos and also be funny when the situation calls for it. Zayn, since turning heel and aligning with Owens, has been a revelation on the microphone and is significantly more compelling now than when he was a babyface. Is feeling better about the pairing of Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. I wrote last week that my fear was that these two joining forces might not benefit McIntyre, who has breakout star potential, because Ziggler has been damaged by bad booking. It's still way too early to tell, but I like what I saw from them this week when they defeated Titus Worldwide. Their finisher, a combination of McIntyre's Claymore and Ziggler's Zigzag, looked great. McIntyre also cut a good promo after the match. The only negative was Ziggler's line about them not wanting to steal the show, because they're the show. That's gimmick infringement, Bella. Would love to see Chad Gable be part of 205 Live. I was happy to see the underrated Gable score an upset victory over Jinder Mahal, but I can't help but feel he's going to end up getting lost in the mid-card shuffle on Raw if Gable, who is listed on WWE.com as weighing 202 pounds, was moved over to 205 Live. He could be the centerpiece of the show. Gable vs. WWE Cruiserweight Champion Cedric Alexander would be must-see. Found it refreshing that tag team partners, greatest Royal Rumble opponents Seth Rollins and Finn Balor did not have any tension between them. There were no games of one-upmanship, no miscommunications and no post-match cheap shots. In other words, it was a deviation from WWE's usual, tired approach to opponents teaming together before they wrestle each other. It was just a showcase victory for Rollins and Baylor over Curtis Axel and Bow Dallas, which is exactly what it should have been. Follow SN Wrestling on Twitter for the latest news, notes and ridiculousness, thinks the Riot Squad members always sound like they're reciting lines during their promos and interviews. Ruby Riot, Live Morgan and, especially, Sarah Logan are fine in the ring, but they could use some more time in promo class. Thought the woman in the red dress in No Way Jose's conga line stole the show. I'm just glad the lascivious Jerry Lawler wasn't there to catch an eyeful of her bouncing around ringside. The king doesn't need any more health scares. Smackdown Live Thoughts Am I the only one who was surprised at how good Big Cass was on the mic? You can't teach a seven-footer to be tall but apparently you can teach him to cut a really good promo. If Cass keeps cutting promos like this one he did on MIZ TV, the sky's the limit for the big man, who undoubtedly has the size that Vince McMahon salivates over. Although Cass and The Miz were not aligned in this segment, I still think they will be, and that's a pairing that should benefit both of them. On a side note, when Cass said that he was tall, educated and damn good-looking, am I the only one who was reminded of Debney Coleman in the 1980s Chevy Chase flick? Modern Problems thinks AJ Styles should start wearing a cup when Shinsuke Nakamura is around. 
Seriously, how many times does Nakamura need to hit him in the nuts before Styles figures it out? Thinks it was a smart move by WWE to change up Shinsuke Nakamura's music to discourage fans from chanting along with it now that he's a heel? I'm surprised they never did that with Sami Zayn's music. Thought Tom Phillips looked stupid for not knowing who AJ Styles' partners for the six-man tag match were going to be after Styles said it would be too sweet. I can't wait to see who it is. Phillips gushed. Was Phillips trying to make viewers think the Young Bucks had jumped ship? Or that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were going to limp out to the ring? Or perhaps he was just being a moron? I know which one I'm going with. Thinks the Iconics promos are generating go-away heat. I think Peyton Royce and Billy Kay are going to be stars, but their mocking promos are grating. They either need to take it down and not sure go in a different direction. Right now they're coming off as a poor man's lay ghoul, which is pretty bad since a rich man's lay ghoul wasn't all that great. 